Over the course of its 18 year history, RuneScape has steadily become more and more a hive of microtransactions. A quintessential fee to pay game, accused many times of being a straight up pay to win game, the ways in which you can spend money on RuneScape are varied and lavish, aggressively and manipulatively monetized as it is at every turn. And the game has come under fresh fire thanks to that wonderfully damning UK House of Commons report on addictive tech technology, the same report that said loot boxes were harmful, behaved in exactly the same way as gambling, should be regulated as such, and children shouldn't be exposed to them. In all of the fun of being validated when it comes to criticism of loot boxes, the RuneScape stuff flew under the radar, but Kotaku picked up on the fact that the community around RuneScape is having a bit of a backlash, and it's not a backlash aimed at the report. No, the criticism has been aimed at RuneScape itself, especially when it came to light that one player spent $62,000 on the fucking thing. Over the years, RuneScape has come up with all sorts of imaginative ways to wheedle more and more money out of its players. In 2012, there was the Squeal of Fortune, in which you could spin a wheel for money, armor, or XP. And you better believe there was an option to pay for it. You could get 10 spins for 5 bucks, or a bulk of 200 for $99.99. But you did get 250 bonus spins, so I guess it's worth it? No. Nah. After that came Treasure Hunter, where you could earn or buy, of course, keys to open boxes that had random stuff. I mean, loot boxes, loot boxes. But RuneScape took it a step further with the prize pool, in which you could gamble your items for better prizes, but if you lost, you lost. I mean, you lost your stuff. So that's a system where you gamble with your items and yet we're still expected to believe that loot boxes and, well, gambling mechanics in games aren't gambling despite the fact that it's a gamble. RuneScape's also had a battle pass, which it called the Rune Pass, all sorts of premium paid features, a, an 11 buck RuneScape membership, just lots of ways to spend money on the game. It's one of those titles that has you asking the question, a question that gets asked a lot when you talk about video games, when is enough enough? When has a game exploited enough cash from people? When does a game have enough self-granted opportunities to get that cash? Well, the the ability to get 62,000 bucks out of someone certainly ain't enough. And can we just say, like, for serious, no video game should have that ability. No video game should have the ability to be able to take $62,000 from someone. It shouldn't have the ability to take a thousand. It shouldn't have the opportunity to take a couple hundred. A lot of people who defend or brush off concerns around microtransactions don't think about how ridiculous it is that a video game has the opportunity afforded to itself to make thousands off of one player. And frankly, I don't think this is limited to games that you pay for, although it's especially egregious. I can't think of any single free-to-play game that is worth thousands of dollars, that is worth any individual player dropping that exorbitant amount of cash on it. But if a game can get its psychological hooks deep enough into you and it has microtransactions, that game has tapped into a financial resource with potentially no upper limit. This is of course why microtransactions have been so attractive to so many video game companies these days, that lack of upper limit. And this is why I still attack microtransactions with all of the ferocity that I attack loot boxes. Most microtransactions are still just as manipulative, just as predatory, and represent sheer financial decadence to the publishers employing them. And they can coax and essentially trick people into spending thousands by offering purchases at little tiny increments, a few dollars here and there. But if you get really into a game and play it for any considerable length of time, those little purchases will tot up without you noticing until you sit back and think, oh wow, look, I've spent thousands of dollars. This method of money making doesn't target just anybody. It goes after a very specific kind of prey, but it ropes in enough people for the video game industry to make billions. Billions in ill-gotten gains, as the video games themselves become less fun to play, but expect to make exponentially more money. And RuneScape is serving up a perfect example of that. Players have noticed that it's gotten greedier, that it's giving out less but wanting more. As one player noted, at this point it's no longer pay to play, it's pay to pay. I still prefer fee to pay.
just because I come up with it, but that's pay to pay is good too. The House of Commons talked about the player spending $62,000 or £50,000 in queen quids, saying it caused significant financial harm for both the player and his parents. The report said JX, what made the game, told us that it generates about one third of its revenue from microtransactions, with two thirds coming from an alternative subscription model. The company's director of player experience, Kelvin Plomer, told us that players can potentially spend up to a thousand pounds a week or five thousand pounds a month in runescape but that only one player had hit that limit in the previous 12 months the company's reasoning for setting this limit seemed to stem from fraud prevention rather than out of a duty of care to prevent people spending more money than they are able yep sounds about right Priorities. Jagex does allow players to request deletion of the account or suspension of the account or a payment block. However, crucially in the case of the parent who contacted us, for data protection reasons it can deal only with account holders and so was unable to take direct action in response to the parent's concerns. I do think the interesting note there is the, the, the talk about how there's a limit on how much you can spend. We see that used to excuse a number of things that was used in the, um, when the Rockstars put that casino in GTA Online. Well, there is a limit on how much you can spend at any given time, and therefore that makes it okay. But as the report notes, those limits may be in place not to actually protect the player, but to protect the interests of the company. It's just something to be aware of whenever a company busts out an excuse for one of its shitty business practices. The thing they're using to claim altruism may not actually be altruistic at all, and rather self-serving. Kotaku spoke with a number of RuneScape players who are all pretty pissed pissed off at the way RuneScape handles its monetization, especially the fact that these items that you can get for the game that you can pay for are not just cosmetic, but can often be significantly powerful gameplay boosts. One RuneScape player summed up the animosity thusly, a combination of especially aggressive treasure hunter promos, a lack of content updates for several months, and a strong feeling from the RuneScape community that they are being taken advantage of. Outrage over microtransactions in RuneScape isn't a new thing, there is just an overwhelming sense of this company really doesn't care about us when they keep keep pushing these promotions after many years of being told to stop or at least toned down without any signs of interest from Jajex. I'm just gonna keep saying that name different ways. One self-described whale said that they'd spent over £500 on RuneScape's microtransactions, but because you can pay so easily for advantages that they felt they cheated and hadn't actually achieved a thing in the game. You cheated not only yourself, but your wallet. The community not only considers the things you can get with microtransactions to be advantageous, they're called straight up overpowered by people who are sick of the amount of money grubbing. While the game itself hurts for decent updates, the stuff you can spend money on is constantly innovated. Whether or not the House of Commons report and the resulting community backlash will have any effect on Jajishu remains to be seen. By all accounts, they're making far too much money to stop of their own volition but one hopes that with enough pressure, RuneScape may actually calm the fuck down. Because all of this is pretty fucking grotesque. At some point, a video game needs to stop and say, you know what, I've got enough ways to make money, but that's something we've learned in the years of covering the game industry together. There is no way the game industry itself will impose these limits, because the answer to the question, when is enough enough, from game companies is never. There is never enough. To bust out an old catchphrase, game companies don't just want some money, they want all of the money. All of the money that they could conceivably make in the world. Anything less just isn't enough. Hell, even if they made somehow more than all of the money in the world, if they broke physics, it still wouldn't be enough, because by the time the next financial quarter rolls around, they're saying, okay, you broke physics and made more than all the money in the world, but have you made even more than that? Anyway, RuneScape. Calm it the fuck down, yeah?